Hey friends, this is the Miss Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead. Well, Giant Tiger had a sale on this week of celery at a dollar a package, okay? Now, I don't know about you guys, but if it's a soup, a sauce, a stew, or a crock pot meal, I always add celery. And for short-term storage, I cut it off the bottom and I trim the tops and I put it in a jug of water in the fridge, kind of like you do with fresh cut flowers. But when it goes on for sale for a dollar, and I know darn well come winter time it's going to be two forty-nine a stock for a package, uh, I'm going to can it. Yes, folks, you can can celery. And here's how we're going to do it. First we have all our jars uh, washed, rinsed, and ready to go. We have our lids simmering, and we have cut up our celery and washed it and rinsed it. Now I have one of my big stock pots half full of water and we're just bringing it up to a boil. We're going to put the celery in the stock pot of boiling water and we're going to blanch it for three minutes. And we're going to take our strained celery and we're going to very very carefully drop it into the boiling water. Trying ever so hard not to spill it all over the floor. We're going to put a lid on it and we're going to bring it back up to a boil and let it cook for three minutes. Alrighty, here we go. We have <clears throat> our half pint jars. Some of them are squat, some of them are tall, but it doesn't matter. We're going to fill these to one inch from the top. It works out to a cup of celery in a half pint jar. We're going to do a quarter teaspoon of salt and we're going to fill up the jars to one inch from the top. Always, always, always debubble. Wipe the rim of your jar, put yourself a hot lid and a clean ring, screw it down fingertip tight. And I always put a little bit of vinegar in my lid water and in my canner to keep the jars from clouding up. And into the pressure canner it goes. Alright, we'll be back when the canner is full. Now my second layer is full and I have three squat jars left and because my first layer was squat jars I have room for a second tray for a third layer and we're just going to put these on there. We're going to put our lid on, there we go, and we're going to lock it into place and we're going to allow it to vent a steady stream of steam for 10 minutes. This is crucial, this pushes the air out of the canner creating the vacuum. Here's our timer. We have been venting a steady stream of steam for the last 10 minutes and now we're going to put our 10 pound weight on it. When that jiggles vigorously, we'll start our timing and we'll gently turn our pot down until that it's just a gentle jiggle. And then we're going to process these for 35 minutes. Alright, this is a new canner and it doesn't actually give a gentle rocking motion like my old one did. It kind of just goes bonkers. But I'm going to set my timer for 35 minutes. This is what it does. And it's going crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my heat down to in between high and medium. Sorry about the steam. And it will just go nuts periodically. Probably once every 40 seconds or so. Alright, it's been 35 minutes. We'll turn off our timer. We'll turn off our burner. And we will let our canner cool down. Even though this is down and the weight is not jiggling and there's no steam coming out, there's still going to be steam in here. So always, always, always open the canner away from you. Using lifter tongs, remove them from the canner and put them on a towel or folded tablecloth. There you have it folks. Canned celery for your soups, stews, sauces and crock pot dinners all winter long. Now these should pop down but if for any reason one of them doesn't ping down put it in the fridge and use it first. This is the Mrs. Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead saying canned celery. Who'd have thunk it? <laughs>